can have uh, um Hello everybody, my name is Peter Mortimer and today I'm going to give you a talk on the tenements of Glasgow. Glasgow has been typified by the, the tenement building. It's the type of housing that's been associated with the city for 150, going on 200 years. And this first slide here is uh, gives you some idea of the density of tenement buildings within the city. This is just a, a clip of the, an aerial view of the Gorbals. And you can see it's just street after street and row after row of tenements. And what I'd like to do is actually take you back and, and find out how all this came about. First thing I'll show you here is a couple of very old tenements in the city, and you may recognise them. They're on Gallowgate and both stand either side of the street. And they both date from 1771. So these were early the early tenements from the 18th century, and they would have been typical of what was happening in Glasgow around that time. What we're looking at here is on the left-hand side, we're looking at a map of the city, of the town as it was, to be fair, back in 1783. And the city grew up around two centres. The first centre was here, around the cathedral, and the second one was two settlements. There was a pathway which ran from the north up at this, the cathedral down to the river, and that path became High Street and Salt Market. And then the old Glasgow town, the main streets were High Street, Salt Market, Gallowgate, Trongate, Castle Street, Rotten Row, Drygate, and Stockwell Street. And this area was heavily congested with tenements, and this was the main core of the town back in the 18th century. To the 19th century, we've got, on the right hand side is a paper clip, clipping um, from 1834 about tenements for sale in Abbotsford Place, which was down on the Gorbals. And this is some of the very early tenements as we would know them today that were built just south of the river uh, in the Gorbals. And on the right hand side, you can see the extensive length of tenement building uh, running all the way along the street. Now, Abbotsford Place back at that time was very much a desired residential area. It was called Glasgow's Harley Street because there were lots of uh, medical doctors lived there, but there were also lawyers, businessmen, clergymen, and it was really um, quite a swanky address back at that time. But this was the early, some early examples of tenements in the city. And here we see on the left-hand side a plan view of Abbotsford Place. And on the right, we see the rear elevation of the, the, the tenement run. And you'll notice that they have circular stairwells to the rear of the building. Now, what this actually did was it meant that the building had a huge uh, area in the core of the tenement. And here over on this side, we see the plan of the second floor, as it happens to be at numbers 19 to 21 Abbotsford Place. And what it did is it created very big tenements of four and five uh, rooms and pantries and such what. So these were um, big, big houses. And it's a great pity that they were all demolished in the 1970s. Arrived, they would have been uh, really desirable properties. Other early tenements from similar vintage, maybe slightly later, uh, there was a, a significant run of tenements in Monteith Row, which was a mixture of tenements and townhouses. And Monteith Row was in the east end of the city, very much the street where people who had money were living. Again, it was doctors, it was businessmen, and indeed. Um, some of the Templeton family who owned the carpet factory uh, a short distance away, they lived there. And on the right hand side, we see a, a, a tenement run uh, going back to a similar 1840, 1850s, and that's at Minerva Street over in Finiston. And that survived really well. And, and as you can see, this is a modern photograph. It looks absolutely terrific. Glasgow, however, before tenements uh, were around, uh, the area that we looked at earlier, uh, centering on Ca uh, High Street and Trongate and Salt Market and Brigate, uh, it was full of venals and closes. These were narrow passageways with houses uh, very close side by side. 
conditions were appalling. The sanitary conditions were even more appalling. And in 1866, the town passed the City Improvement Trust Act, and that allowed the, the, the authorities to knock down all these old properties and start to uh, bring the, the, the town of Glasgow into the modern day as it was at that time. And one of the things that they did was they engaged the services of an early photographer called Thomas Annan. And Thomas Annan was charged with going round and photographing all these venals and closes before demolition. And here we see a couple of work. And it really does look quite Dickensian uh, in its appearance and conditions were undoubtedly quite appalling. So from 1860 through to the 1890s, there was a boom in the building of tenements in Glasgow. And believe it or not, there are remarkably few photographs from that period of any tenement construction. And the, the photograph uh, on the left uh, shows a tenement being constructed over uh, close to Pollockshaws Road at Prince Edward Street. And on the right hand side, we've got a, a plan of a typical uh, landing on a tenement building. And it was a quite a standard format because you had a room and kitchen on either side. And in the centre, you had a single apartment or as it was better known, a single end. And in the landing area, there would, all, would have been a toilet and that would have been shared by three families. The single end incidentally was about 11 foot square and had a little bed recess there. Uh, it was a very small apartment, but it wasn't unusual for a family of four or five to be living in um, th this little single end. Glasgow tenements are made up of sandstone. And something we need to just touch on is the different types of sandstone. And they're in, basically in two categories, the blonde sandstone or the yellow honey colored sandstone or red sandstone. And the blonde sandstone was the first a sandstone that was used in tenement building, and that came out of quarries in and around the city, principally over at Giffnock at Burnfield Road and up in Bishop Briggs. As that sandstone got exhausted, then the tenement builders had to look further afield. And due to the, the new railways that were now running at this time, that, that task became an awful lot easier. And sandstone, red sandstone, was brought from Ayrshire and Dumfries into the city to continue the building of tenements. Here we see a couple of examples in the city of red sandstone tenements that are still standing to this day. Now, there is a, a hierarchy of tenements. Some are very, very plush. Some are extremely beautiful to look at. They're well adorned. And of course, they're at the high end, they're at the upper end of, of the tenement family, so to speak. And here we see a couple of examples uh, of, of tenements in use today and looking splendid. Here's another few examples. The one on the left is at Broom Hill, over on the west side of the city. Uh, a, a, a run of tenements going down a hill there, uh, just at Broom Hill. And on the right, we have a long tenement run in Tollcross Road. And this tenement run is of 26 closes, and it's believed to be currently the longest tenement run in the city, unbroken, unbroken tenement run. Uh, the longest was at one time over at McClellan Street in Kenning Park, but that got demolished when the, the M8 motorway was laid uh, in that district. Down at the other end of the tenement scale, you had some very plain and um, ordinary tenements. They, they, they weren't uh, adorned with any nice columns or, or entrance porches. They were just uh, plain uh, finishes and they were for the working classes. And uh, they, this would have been the, the, the tenements where we saw the plan earlier of each landing with a room, in, two rooms and kitchen and a single end in the centre. And these became very uh, grimy and, and, and into the 1960s, a lot of these tenements were, were really showing their age. And the main reason was that the, ten, the private tenement owners uh, spent very, very little money on maintenance. So as uh, the tenements went through decade after decade of Glasgow uh, winters uh, and, and wet weather, the tenements began to uh, really become a very poor condition and the living conditions within it were quite challenging for the family. Is living there. Examples on the left, you see um, a street where the blonde sandstone goes so far along, 
and then it's take, it's overtaken by red sandstone. So um, the, the blonde sandstone became exhausted, and the next building material to be used in that tenement run was red sandstone. And on the, the right hand uh, image, you see a tenement run which is using a bit of both. It's got the red sandstone on the ground floor at pavement level, and the upper floors above that are in blonde sandstone. And that's quite an unusual mix in Glasgow. You don't see that terribly often. And that one, incidentally, is at Whitby Street up in the uh, Parkhead area. Now, in the ground floor of many tenements, um, given over to shops. And one of the main reasons this happened was the tenement, the private tenement owners found that they could get better rental uh, hiring out the ground floor as a shop uh, rather than having it as, as uh, other more apartments. And a lot of the main streets of Glasgow, uh, was, this was commonplace where the ground floors would be taken over totally to shops. And you still see many examples of that today. If you walk along Dumbarton Road, for example, um, or Duke Street, you will see that uh, the tenement uh, living quarters are upstairs and the whole of the ground floor is taken up by shops. And the building of tenements uh, was sometimes handed over to specific organisations. And here's an example over in Ballater Street, where this tenement uh, on the left was built by the UCBS, the United Cooperative Baking Society. A very big bakery in, in nearby McNeil Street. So they built these um, closes for their uh, workers. But of course, the ground floor was taken up by the cooperative shops, none of which exist any longer. And you can see there's a whole mixture uh, of different businesses from a barber shop to a laundry uh, to a takeaway and so on. Now, this particular building in, in Ballater Street is adorned UCBS, which you can see over in this panel. Uh, that, that uh, is on the facade of the building. And in the cooperative bakery, it was not uncommon for people to get members of the family a job. And so UCBS uh, was, was known to the locals as uncles, cousins, brothers and sisters. Some tenements that were built on a corner site did not have a back court. And what that did is it gave them um, something of a little problem to solve insofar as where could the tenants in the close dry their washing. They, they didn't have a back coat to hang their washing out, so how would they achieve that? And the, and the answer was they put it on the roof. So they had a roof drying area. And the one on the left is on London Road, and it's actually called the Craig Nestor Mansions. And right on the top, you have a balustrade, uh, which you can see up here, the balustrade. And on the top, uh, there was uh, areas where the women could uh, run a line across and then dry their washing. And you see another example here, which has now been demolished in Town Head in the black and white photo. And right up at the top, uh, on the roof, flat roof with a railing round it and the chimney pots and stuff. And that's where the, the women there would be drying their washing. Other kinds of uh, tenements, there was a type called dwellings, workmen's dwellings. Uh, and these were uh, tall buildings that could be four or five stories in some instances. But the characteristic feature was they did not have a close in the traditional sense. Access was gained by going up a stair at the rear of the property and they had open verandas. Like you can see you can see here the open verandas, open air verandas to all the doors on each of the floors. And this is quite a common uh, design that you would also see down in London. There's a great deal of uh, Council housing in London is of this style, but in Glasgow was, they, they were called workmen's dwellings. There's also a little um, urban myth in Glasgow that uh, a lot of tenement windows were bricked up uh, to prevent paying the window tax. And unfortunately, this is no more than a good pub story, uh, because by the time the tenements were getting built in volume, the window tax had been abolished bricked up windows in some uh, tenement runs. In fact, there's just here you see a bricked up window. And the reason it was uh, bricked up was to maintain the appearance of the building so that it, it was symmetrical throughout its whole length. Uh, and these two pictures uh, here uh, are from Green uh, Greenhead Street down in uh, Bridgeton. And there's examples there of tenements with the bricked up window 
uh, but certainly not to do with the window tax. Other features in Glasgow tenements. To the rear of uh, many Glasgow tenements in the back court area, there would be small workshops. And the way in which these were accessed was through a pen or a pen. And this was a passageway that passed underneath the first floor of a tenement to the rear area and uh, the back court area. Um, this pen on, on the, the left hand side at 1103 Argyle Street uh, is still in existence and it leads through to um, some boutique shops nowadays. And another feature would have been what was known as a high back. And the high back uh, is the back court area, but it was at first floor level. And what was below it was the store area of shops on the ground floor. So here we see um, a, a high back in Burroughs Lane, just up uh, at High Street. There's a wee girl playing skipping ropes there. And below her is the storeroom of the shop that fronted on to Duke Street. Earlier I said there was a hierarchy of tenements where you had, you had tenements from very, very high quality all the way down to some that were purely functional. And one of the features that there was also a telltale sign of how good a tenement was, was the close. And the famous Glasgow Wally close or Kyle close it was something that people would look out for. And here we see a couple of examples where the close entrance here on the left um, is beautifully tiled um, all the way up, right up to the top landing. This meant it was very hygienic. The tiles could be uh, wiped down and kept clean and it generally made for a much cleaner uh, uh, close. And here we see uh, the tiles on the right hand panel and they're going all the way up right to the top floor. There's a nice handrail there and you can see just about here uh, within the, 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 you've got nice friezes or panels laid out and even somebody's put in a, a wee um, bush there just to make it look really swanky. So the the the, 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 the wally close or the tile close was certainly a sign of just how good uh, a tenement it was and you would know that the minute you opened the door to go into the close, uh, you would know what kind of building you were in. Uh, a real big part of tenement life was what was happening in the back courts, and the back courts played an enormously important function in tenement life. And here we see uh, the sort of back court uh, vista. On the right hand side, you can see the back courts, and you've got a little workshop uh, that I touched on down here. So you had that mix of people living uh, alongside uh, some work, work spaces. And on the right hand side, we see the typical uh, Glasgow back court. You've got the refuse bins or the midgy bins, as they were called. The shared uh, back court with railings to um, distinguish between which close was which. And also, in the, the, the back court served many, many purposes. Uh, the first one we see here is a couple of kids in a pram. Um, and and they, so it was being used as a nursery. And in the background, you can see some woman has hung her washing out uh, to, to dry. And if you look over here on the left hand side, you can see right throughout this back court, you can see washings hanging out to dry. Um, you can also see these slightly more robust buildings, uh, bigger than the refuse bins, uh, uh, sheds. Uh, and these were, were in fact wash houses. Some uh, back courts would have wash houses within them. There we see more examples of the back court drying green. This particular shot is actually somebody drying their washing from their, their window. They had a pole that would stick out their window and they could uh, put a little line on it and, and hang out some washing to dry. And over here on the right, you see um, more uh, drying green use. But you also see kids playing, you see women having a chat. And the Glasgow tenement and the Glasgow back court was a, was a very welcoming place in many, many ways. This was a, a, a rota that I came across uh, from a house factory in Oxford Street. And this was uh, telling each tenant when they could have the use of the back court wash house and the drying area. And it was all very well defined and regulated. Um, their own shot at the wash house and boiler, and they had to leave them clean and dry after they had finished using them. Some people, um, have done very well in their back courts. And we see a couple of examples here where well, they've actually turned them into quite attractive gardens. Most back courts did not have grass, uh, but one or two did. 
Uh, and on the left-hand side, we see um, a, a little grassed area has been put in, and there's some borders and some little bedding plants. Uh, and the, the wall and the, the shed there has been painted white just to enhance its appearance. And it looks, it looks rather well. Uh, over on the right-hand side, I think they've really pushed the boat out because they, they've got it uh, beautifully manicured, lots of nice bed and plants, and um, it, it's it, it's, a, it's a credit to the people who managed to do that. But again, you still see in the background uh, the inevitable washing getting dried, uh, so it didn't impinge on uh, the other functions of the back court. And really, um, I'm a great believer that the back courts actually belong to the kids because this was their playground. This is where they grew up and made friends and skinned their knees and stuff like that. So on the left hand side here, we've got um, a midgy bin, uh, a, a dustbin laid on its side. And it's clearly it's a wee lassie's playing at shops. She's got some old uh, tin cans and such what out the bin. And that's a shop and people would come and buy it with uh, pebbles or bits of broken glass. Uh, well, over on the right-hand side, we've got something going on. Some young girls all dressed up, uh, doing something with hula hoops and having generally quite a good time. And of course, the boys uh, they enjoyed their football. All girls enjoy football nowadays, of course, which is great. Uh, the image on the left, you can see lads playing on a bit of spare ground um, in front of the tournament, or behind the tournament, and. Uh, the boy in the centre has got the, a broken leg or something, and he's got his, his uh, crutches, but that's not stopping him taking part and enjoying uh, getting stuck in there. And on the right, we can even replicate the moon landings of Neil Armstrong, where you've got a couple of lads dressed as astronauts and going along in the space hoppers. The back court is, has also been a place for adult entertainment, and periodically um, things were court in, in quite a fashion and there would be concerts um, on the left you see um, some women and men all dancing and enjoying themselves and over on the right this was actually I think it was in Thistle Street 1959 where you had a group called the Kinning Park Ramblers putting on a concert in a back court and it's absolutely mobbed that people are enjoying that uh, entertainment literally on their doorstep and of course the, the tenements also spawned this wonderful activity, which is not quite an Olympic uh, uh, subject yet or an Olympic sport, and that is windy hanging, where you could just look out your window, see what was happening in your street, um, gather up the, the, the information like eyes are off a still game, and then you could tell everybody in the community all the gossip and scandal as viewed and scanned from your own window. And lastly, tenements um, have even made it into art. This is quite a well-known print uh, by Avril Patton. It's called Windows in the West. And she's uh, she's painted this quite, quite beautiful uh, Glasgow tenement. And the secret is, is to look in all the tenements because there's something happening in each of the houses. Uh, and it just looks absolutely terrific. So that's um, quite a short history of the Glasgow tenement. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if there's any questions, I'm sure you can direct them on to Glasgow Life and we'll try and get a, a reply or an answer back to you. Thank you very much indeed.